All right, thank you so much. Uh, now we're joined with Senator Edith De Leon Guerrero in the CMI Senate. Senator, good morning. Thanks for joining us. How are you doing? Great, thank you. Hope all is well on your side too. Yes, it is. I just wanted to dive in. I know things are busy uh, and we wanted to check in with you today with regards to uh, the impeachment process. Uh, we do know that uh, the draft for rules is being written up in the Senate. Can you give us the latest and what your involvement looks like with regards to the impeachment trial in the Senate? Well, you know, the, the latest that I could tell you, Thomas, really is that um, I know that uh, somewhere in the local paper, it appeared that uh, there was a leadership meeting that's supposed to be conducted and um, uh, it probably did. And, and just for everybody to understand too, that I am not part of the leadership of the Senate. I am a minority, so I have no participation in that particular meeting. So that would be the latest from my side. Um, and of course, the introduction of um, the resolution that I introduced with Senator Paul Malonia, um, we pre-filed a resolution. And also to, um, you know, we're hoping that the rules that were um, constructed back in 2013, during that time for the impeachment of uh, Governor Fico and subsequently he resigned before uh, even the impeachment trial happened at the Senate, um, that the Senate take that into consideration so that, um, you know, in, in our view, it will be a working document already in place and we don't have to um, spend so much time to try to um, construct a new um, impeachment rules. And I just did want to revisit that because we ran a story uh, last night that shows Governor Torres, then uh, Senate uh, Vice President of the Senate, uh, who talked about uh, drafting the rules up for then Governor Benigno Fitiel. Uh, for a community or for uh, residents who have not seen this impeachment process play out before, uh, what exactly are the rules that will be sent set? Uh, what are you deciding on in these rules for the trial? Can you explain the significance of this? Well, you know, the, the rules are, are necessary in order for, for, I guess, you know, any impeachment trial or for any trial for that matter to be conducted in a fashion that is um, following under, you know, the, the fairness of law to, to both parties. That's what it is. We need to be reminded that this is um, justice has to be applied. Um, evidence and facts have to be reviewed. And obviously, um, the resolution for, for the impeachment has been submitted, transmitted to the Senate on January 14 by the House clerk. So we are in receipt of that. Everyone, every um, sitting Senator, um, you know, have a copy of that. And whatever decision is made uh, by the Senate president, obviously um, that will be the process that we will all take um, as we, you know, become involved in the impeachment proceedings when and if that is scheduled. Are there particular rules that you'd like to see that uh, you want to see in the impeachment trial? Are there some specifics that you definitely want to be a part of that? Um, you know, the, at this juncture, really, uh, it's, I think it's uh, premature to try to state on record what particular rule uh, I am more inclined to follow. But I, I think what's important, again, is that uh, what the rules that we have proposed for adoption is, uh, you know, put in there to take into consideration as a working document right now. And if there's any intended modifications to it, then, then let that take its course. But again, I think it's important to um, emphasize that there has to be justice and fairness for both parties, obviously, because the, um, you know, the House has already um, provided the, the Senate, the uh, articles of impeachment, there's six of them. And um, in any, in any you know, court case, uh, there has to be um, you know, evidence and facts that needs to be reviewed by the jury and which is us, the senators here. I did want to get to uh, the parties, which, which you mentioned. You are the lone uh, declared Democrat in the Senate. Is that correct? That's correct. And so uh, what has your perspective been like? Uh, have you been uh, keeping a close eye on the JGO committee's process and their hearings? Uh, did you watch the impeachment vote happen? Uh, what are you, what, what is, uh, I guess, uh, has your involvement been before, uh, uh, you know, outside of the Senate? You know, Thomas, I'm so happy that you, I'm very thankful that you asked that question, and I'll be very honest. Um, during all the proceedings of the House, um, during the impeachment and all of the, uh, you know, all the uh, witnesses that were, were subpoenaed, 
I personally never sat down and, and watched the proceedings um, from, from, from the beginning of time. Um, I take it upon myself. I am busy with uh, many, many issues that I wanted to address and work in the best interest of our Commonwealth. And also um, as a sitting siphon Senator, I wanted to um, spend you know, time and focus on those particular subject matters that I'm very much passionate about. And, and as you can see, a lot of, a lot of my work are, are being um, reported on the local papers. And that is what I'm dedicating my time on. Um, the reason why for that too, is because obviously people can be accused of biasness and I don't wanna fall into that situation. And, and I, again, I speak on, on you know, justice that there has to be fairness for both parties. And I think it's, it's not, it's not um, you know, as, a, as a sitting Senator, obviously we're all aware that eventually it's gonna, it's gonna once the, the, the articles of impeachments are, are done in the House side, and once it gets transmitted to the Senate, that all of us uh, nine sitting senators will be involved in the process whenever that decision is made. And uh, you are one of nine uh, votes, uh, one of six possibly to convict Governor Torres. Uh, you are the lone Democrat, as we just discussed. Uh, is it safe to expect that you're going to vote for the uh, to convict Governor Torres, or are you going to wait and see? Um, I don't think it's fair to to um, expect that right now as we speak. Um, of course, I am a sitting Democrat. I'm the only Democrat in the Senate, but uh, we. Personally, I cannot sit there and, and go through this process and consider this as a political um, um, you know, uh, game or, or for reasons because I'm a Democrat and the governor's a Republican, no. Um, again, I'm gonna speak about the judicial process that a person is innocent until proven guilty. And, and that's the reality that we live in. That is the democracy that we live in. So therefore, it's only fair and proper that my actions as we speak today has to be based on the facts and the evidence that is going to be presented before us if that should come through as a trial. And uh, Senator, I also wanted to get your perspective as a, former, uh, as a former cabinet member. You were the Secretary of Labor. Um, That's your comment, uh, are, you, are you able just to provide some perspective on, on just what this means in, in the course of history for the CNMI? Well, you know, you know, it's a, every time I go back into that time period, um, I was a labor secretary. I was appointed uh, December of 2014. I was removed um, May of 2017. And obviously all of those time periods um, at the height of my removal was also the height of the worker protest from the casino industry. Um, the employees, you know, demanding to be paid their unpaid wages. Um, I am very, I am very mindful of that time period during my life as a former secretary of labor, but I would not personally take that into consideration. And it would, it would, it would not be proper for me to take that and, and, and use it as a, as a reason to, to cast my decision on whatever is presented before us at the Senate. And Senator, you served under Torres and Palacios, correct? Actually, uh, the Arnold Palacios, um, the current Lieutenant Governor was a Senate president at that time when I was a labor secretary and um, Torres was the governor after um, Governor Enos passed away. But I have served um, all governors on different levels, um, except for the first governor of the Commonwealth, Governor Carlos Camacho, simply because I was not yet at a voting age at that time when he took office. But every other governor I've served. And uh, Senator, I'm just gonna ask you a question that I've asked all of the representatives that we've got a chance to sit with when the impeachment, before the impeachment vote happened which is uh, what is your message to the community who watches, who's watching this? Uh, we're just you know, nine months or so away from the election, uh, who might not have trust in the current legislative process. Uh, what do you have to say to those who don't simply trust what's going on right now and uh, might not even uh, have trust in the Senate to do what they seem to be right? Do you have, do you have a message to them? Well, I, I think, you know, um... Every, every one of us have a right to our own opinion, but at the same time too, um, and there's a lot of things that have happened in the community. There's a lot of um, you know, situations that are um, still very much of concern for all of us to be, to be um, looking at. Um, the reality here, Thomas, is that there's, there's so many issues facing our Commonwealth and um, every person out in the community has every right to analyze and, and um, review and, and ask themselves personally if everything that is going on 
Are they satisfied? Are they happy? Is their um, family much more better than before? Uh, things like that. Um, the issues are, are, are so vast and so, so big in terms of financial situations. We are in a $130 million deficit uh, for the past few years. Uh, we have all of these federal funds that have, have been given to us as a result of the um, coronavirus and, and even during the CARES Act for you to um, there's so much money, but at the same time, too, we also need to take a look at where are we today in terms of our financial security and looking forward the next maybe two years or three years from today, because looking at the numbers of um, tourists coming in, it's not going to hold us out. So we need to be much more um, prudent. We need to have more information of expenditures and things like that. So the public um, they have every right to inquire on their elected officials what is going on with my government, because this is their government. They have every right for honest and transparent information. So um, not trusting the legislature. Um, you know, again, every person out there in the community that is voting or even not voting, they pretty much know for themselves um, who, who they can trust. All right, Sandra, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Thomas. You have